Uh, g'day guys, this is a two litre uh, Audi A4. Um, just a few notes about the cooling system. So uh, the water pumps leak here, we all know under the manifolds and the radiators go. Uh, but as preventative maintenance when you're working on them, always change this coolant adapter here because they actually shear off on their own. Um, that's on top of the um, turbo there. Now, um, always replace this hose as well um, after three years or four years. Um, now, that hose goes off because these break here. Um, but there's a new thing we're seeing now. So the other end of this hose cracks inside this tank, right, and just lets go. So now you've got to change that. The same thing happens there at the front of the bottle. I've removed that broken piece. It's dropped on the floor. So that one, this, it's been modified on this car. So this is not how it's meant to be, but basically someone's used the ends and they thought they're smart. Little do they realise the ends all break off anyway. All of them all at once. And guess what, guys? The water pump's leaking too. But this is the sort of stuff we know. What we've realised on these is, like, I think the coolant regulators failed here, right? And it overheated um, this plastic. So the plastic's worn away on the radiator cap. When it came in, the O-ring was jammed in there, right? But the best part of this is... This is the old bottle, right? There's nothing wrong with this cap. See that? You need to replace the bottle as well. So what happens is when the car has an overheating uh, event, Something changes in this plastic. This is the third one we've seen like this. And basically, you can put the radiator cap on. It can even do the final lock-in position, yet it will evacuate out this little vent here. That's the vent there. So when, when getting to that 70,000, 60,000 Ks, I know it's not many Ks, you're up for this hose, the adapter, washer Audi call on the turbo, um, the water pump, and this hose with the other piece that runs the back, which goes onto another plastic adapter that we've not had a problem yet with, but I'm sure we will, right? So um, that's that. The main thing here was about the faulty radiator cap, right? Doing things like a radiator and water pump and then when the customer leaves, this thing just explodes on its own, like, and it won't come off. It'll stay there, look. It's on. The broken hose is on the new thing, but it will let go, uh, as in it'll, it'll breach from behind. So there's no other way out. I'm sure in Europe their parts are slightly or more, far more cheaper, but the reason this cap went is the power of steam, superheated steam, I believe, right? and it even dislodged the O-ring. Uh, I believe the coolant regulators failed here because the EPS light was on on arrival. I haven't checked it yet. So we're just dealing with one thing at a time. Inadvertently, the customers also mix different types of coolant, which in these cars ends up creating a mud thing. So if you have a Volkswagen or an Audi, um, uh, if you mix coolants, you get this sludgy type of reaction. But in the Audis, in many of them, there's a silica bag built into the coolant tank that can burst and also give you the brown coolant. Um, so, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's not like a Japanese car where you just change one hose and you're done or two hoses. Here, it's, it's all of that. Now, when you're removing your broken pieces from the radiator here, you remove these two clips, right? And you access it from there. You can see it there. When you remove that, this hose 
that piece is very, very tight inside and it disintegrates and actually blocks that area too. So you want to use this tool to get out very patiently. You don't want to use a flat screwdriver or you'll actually break the radiator, which, you know, the book time's 2.5. Uh, uh, eight hours, but in reality, you know, the front of the car comes off, there's an inner cooler here. So you want to be really careful with that end of it. But with this end of it, the, this, this thread somehow changed shape from the overheat event. Um, and, and it was quite noticeable here that the cap's rocking around. Bear in mind, the cap that's rocking around is not the broken one. It's just a spare one. No. I'll lock it in its final position. No, it's locked. There you go. So something's changed in the dimensions of these threads, which allows coolant to bypass down there. And that's that. So it's a common theme, guys. Even in here. Oops, sorry. Even in this end of it. Have a look. It's broken as well. One, two, three, four. Four points of failure, five points with the thread, six points of failure with the disintegration of the cap, seven points of failure with the O-ring moving. 